So I keep talking about the, this concept of post-processing, right? So we have our graphics set up in such a way and it'll, we'll use that to really take it to the next level with post-processing. And we have these particles and we're really gonna make them look better with this idea of post-processing. Well, the post-processing step is here. So we're finally gonna see what it is that I've been rambling about. Uh, and so the Unity post-processing, uh, basically what is actually called the Unity post-processing stack is a, is a way to apply some basically cinematic image effects, post-processing effects, whatever you want to call them, to how our scenes are rendered. Uh, you can think of it uh, along the lines of Photoshop uh, for video games, right? It's where you apply your uh, Instagram filters and all that fun stuff to, to give things the sort of look, the, the artistic aesthetic. You can really greatly affect and change how a project feels to your players using these effects. Now, depending on what type of machine you're on, what sort of hardware, some of these effects might you know, cause a frame rate drop, some may not. Some may work a little bit differently on PC versus Mac or different lighting settings, but ultimately it's about sort of sculpting uh, the graphics of your scene the way you want. And so that's what we're gonna use. More importantly, what we're gonna use, so you can go out and download these on the asset store. They're also on GitHub. They're completely free and all that stuff. What you'll normally download off the asset store is what's called V1, version one of the post-processing stack. We're gonna be using V2 of the post-processing stack, which is currently in beta, however, it has been noted by the, the team that's developing it that it's actually more stable than V1, the actual release version, and gives us a lot of other cool options that really uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna enjoy. So I'm gonna come over here back into Unity. Um, so I've got my ship with my particle effects and all that's all well and good. And the first thing I need to do is I need to tell my camera that it is capable of seeing post-processing. So there's two parts of this. I tell my camera, yes, you see effects, and then I set up the effects. Right? And I can do this through something called volumes and stuff like that. And so on my camera, I'm just gonna come down here to the very bottom and I'm gonna click add component and then I'm gonna go to rendering and I'm going to add a post process layer. Now our post process layer is basically me saying camera, you see post processing effects. And so the first thing is uh, the trigger here, it's automatically gonna find that, that's just gonna be the camera that it's already on. And then second is, okay, what layer is it looking for? Right now it says nothing, and so I'm getting a warning, hey, no layers uh, set, I'm not gonna see anything. Okay, well, if I set it to everything, it's gonna say, whoa, I didn't say that. All right, that's too many. This is gonna be really, really inefficient as it's looking through every layer in my game for something that's potentially a post-processing volume. So- Are you, are you saying that Unity's becoming clippy? Basically, it's like, hey, I see you selected a layer, what would you like to do? Uh, and so I don't wanna do that. So instead, I have a layer here that is defined called post-processing. Now there's nothing on that layer. It's not doing anything right now. I don't have a single game object using that layer in any way yet. But I'm gonna say, all right, you look for any object that is on that layer. And again, that's kind of the layers thing we talked about earlier when I said up here that there's this, the three custom layers for this is the post-processing layer, ground and wall, right? And again, post-processing is one of those layers that nothing is currently using, but eventually will. So then I'm just gonna zoom out here. The other thing I wanna change here is, so we have this post-processing. Uh, I can enable deferred fog and all this stuff. It doesn't hurt anything, so I'm just gonna leave that all the way it is. But I do wanna choose some anti-aliasing, all right? So there's a few places that I can choose anti-aliasing. Uh, you may have noticed up here in my camera where it says, allow MSAA, multi-sample anti-aliasing. But then it immediately says, hey, you're using deferred. You can't use MSAA, that's not allowed anymore. So we're not gonna use it. And so fine, whatever, I don't need you. Um, you turning it on or off isn't gonna do anything because it's just telling you, hey, it doesn't do anything right now, so whatever. Instead, I'm gonna use my post-processing effects to define my own anti-aliasing. And I have a few choices. I'm gonna choose fast approximate anti-aliasing, subpixel morphological anti-aliasing, well, that sounds fun, temporal anti-aliasing. Uh, but honestly, I'm just gonna use the fast approximate because again, our game goes fast. We're not going to notice a lot of artifacts that you might otherwise notice if you're moving slower. So I'm gonna choose fast approximate. And I'm gonna notice everything in my scene smooths just a little bit. It's very hard to tell, but it's a subtle effect, but it just gets rid of the jagged edges. Now, it may so happen that when I click this, my screen turns black. That's normal, I just move my mouse over it. It just needs to update and get some new information so it can smooth everything out. And so there we go. So I'm now using fast approximate anti-aliasing uh, or FXAA. And so that's good. That's all I have to do with my camera. I tell my camera, look, you can use post-processing and have some, uh, some uh, anti-aliasing while you're at it, right? And I could maybe add some ambient occlusion, stuff like that to the camera that are camera specific, but uh, you don't notice it and it's, it's a fairly heavy effect, so I'm just gonna go on without it. 
So that's all well and good. I can see post processing, but that doesn't help me because I don't have any post processing right now. And so I'm going to go down to my prefabs folder and then my VFX subfolder and I have this post processing prefab. Now don't worry, I'm not doing some special secret steps behind the scenes and and you're it's going to ruin everything for you. Uh, the post processing prefab is an empty game object that has a few children that are all empty game objects. I just didn't want to have to create all these empty game objects and name them and place them and whatever. So I have a global game object that is empty. I have a K volumes object that is empty. Um, the only thing that I have that is not empty are these cave volumes and all they are are just simply box colliders. That's it. Right? So I'm not doing anything secret behind the scenes that you don't know about or whatever. So I'm going to click on my global game object here under my post processing volume, my global. And I'm going to add some post processing to this. So I'm going to click add component and then I'm going to go to rendering, post process volume. And this is a global volume, meaning I want this to be sort of the baseline, how my whole scene looks. This is going to be applied to my camera regardless of where it is or all that other stuff. So this is my global profile. So I'll just check that. I'll leave it with a weight of one, meaning it's 100% of it is being applied. I'll leave it with a priority of zero. And to create a profile, I'm just going to click new and it's going to create a profile for me. So I'm going to start off by adding some stuff. I'll click add effect, unity, and I love some bloom. So I'm going to click bloom. And I get all of these options that are grayed out because this is a stack, meaning that I need to define what the baseline is and then what I want to override and do that sort of stuff. So I'm going to say, you know what? I want some intensity, so I'll check the intensity box. And I'll just raise my intensity super duper high. And I'll think, well, I'm not seeing anything. Why am I not seeing anything? Nothing there. All right, well maybe my threshold is too high, so I'll check threshold and I'll drop it down. All right, still don't see anything. What's happening? Well, you recall, I said, hey main camera, look for anything on the post processing layer. Well, on global, I'm on the default layer, so I gotta fix that. So I'll just click the little drop down and say, you know what, you're on the post processing layer now, and boom! Little high. You made a triple A game. Yeah, this, uh, <laughs> this is, look, I made Guild Wars 2, right? So, uh, yeah, we, uh, everyone knows Bloom equals triple A. So there we go, fade away. Um, yeah, so, yeah, maybe that's a bit much, maybe. I'm not willing to commit to that. Um, so there we go. So we can add some Bloom. Who doesn't love some Bloom? And it, the, kind of the cool thing about this is I'm not an artist. I'm a programmer. My art is like stick figures and cubes and whatever. And I can figure this out. That really says something. Uh, so I can have some bloom. Uh, I'll go to uh, add some more. I'm going to add, uh, I don't know, some color grading. Everyone loves color grading. So I'll just come here and say, all right, color grading. Let's, uh, let's add some lift. I don't know what lift does, but let's play around with it. So I'm going to add some lift. There we go. We feeling like we're on Instagram yet. So there, we go. bam, all right. Beautiful. I'm an artist. Yes. All right. I call this one Autumn Breeze. Uh, and, you know, I can play with some temperature and whatever. And I, I kind of can do really whatever I want. I can define my own effects as well, but uh, I'm going to stick to this. I'm going to add some vignettes because vignette makes every artist a pro. So I'm going to add some intensity of vignette and just, I'm just telling a story now. Uh, and it's really cool stuff. Now, I can play around with this all day long and just add all sorts of effects and whatever. And it's, it's pretty neat. We actually have quite a few of these effects that we can apply. So I just go to add effect, unity, and we got depth of fields. We have chromatic aberrations. Chromatic aberration being really, really cool. Uh, I can turn that on. I can check some intensity and just, you know, and that's really neat. I'll turn off my color grading here. And then for my chromatic aberration, I can actually click where it says spectral LUT lookup table. And I can just search for some LUTs that come as part of the post processing stack. So maybe I want some blue red separation, green purple, purple green, red blue. And we can see how we can separate some stuff out there. Some neutral, uh, but that didn't feel very neutral. I don't know. Uh, whatever. And so we can just continue playing around with this, doing whatever we want. Now, that being said, it's, it's worth mentioning at this point that when mm -hmm. you click the add effect button, um, it says Unity under there. Now, if you are someone who writes your own um, shaders and image effects, you can actually add your own custom ones into this stack. And you'll see those as a part um, from the Unity ones to see your own. Yep. Yeah, and it, on the, in the GitHub for the post processing volume two, there's an example of like a grayscale one, and then you can insert them at different points. So if you are someone, we're not going to do that in the workshop, but it's worth pointing out that you don't, you're not restricted just to stack. You can add your own. And they're fairly easy stuff. to do, and a lot of third party folks have already started producing libraries of them. Just tons of really cool effects. Um, so, 
again, we could keep playing around with this, and, and when it's when you're doing this, I highly advise you play around, build whatever you want, man. The sky's the limit here. But so that we have some baseline of what it is we're all seeing, I'm actually going to come back up here to my post process volume or it says profile, I'm gonna hit this circle selector here because I have defined a global reference already, which is just gonna have the, the effects that I'm gonna use for today. Um, and you can always just use that as a reference if you want, or you can make your own, it's entirely up to you. But I'm gonna click global reference, and so these are the ones that I'm using here, and so I can just talk about it a little bit. So we have some motion blur, and the way the motion blur is gonna work is that, you know, if you're moving slowly, you're not gonna see anything, but the faster you go, the more you're gonna know some blur. Again, we're selling that feeling of going fast. I'm adding some auto exposure. And what's neat about auto exposure is it's gonna change how things are keyed in my scene. So it's gonna say if something is too bright, make it darker, if something is too dark, make it brighter. But more importantly, it allows us to add eye adaptation, which says, hey, if I go from a light room into a dark room, everything is gonna be really dark until my eyes adjust and then it brightens up. I go into a bright room, everything's gonna be really bright until my eyes adjust and it darkens. If I stare at the sun uh, and everything else is gonna get dark, and that's not me going blind, because this this is just a game, uh, but that's the eye adaptation in effect. So before, when we looked up at the sky and the sun was just a white blob, all right, now we have eye adaptation and we can actually see it. Without, or without the auto exposure, that's what the sky looks like. It's so bright you can't see the, the sun there, but with auto exposure it keys it down. I'm also adding a little bit of bloom, but more than just the bloom, what's kind of cool here is I'm adding some lens dirt, which you won't necessarily notice all the time. You can sort of see it right here. That's a lens dirt on the lens of my game camera. It's not uh, a smudge. It is a smudge, that's exactly what it is, and, but it's an intentional smudge, uh, which I think is all the difference. Um, for tone mapping, we're using what, something called ACES. So normally it can be like no tone mapping, which tends to make things just sort of look the way they are. You do some neutral, which sort of flattens it out and lets you define how you want your tones mapped yourself. Uh, some custom stuff, but we're using ACES, also called Filmic, which makes it feel a little bit deeper, a little bit more contrasty, a little bit more moody. Uh, and we're adding some post-exposure EV. Now this is important because right now the, the color mode of our game, of this project is gamma, right? And there's two modes, gamma and linear, and I'm not gonna get into all that. Basically all the shaders, everything for this game was built for gamma color space, right? Now, uh, Un or Unity on Windows and Unity on Mac treat gamma a little bit differently. Macs treat gamma a little bit differently than Windows do. So I'm on a PC, so a value of 1.56 feels pretty good, but on a Mac, this will be almost white, super bright, just how to max handle that. So on a Mac, you might do something like negative 0.5, reduce it by like a factor of two whole EVs. Now for me, that's super dark, but on a Mac, that's perfect, right? And so you, if you're on a Mac, you may just adjust the post-exposure EV values to be what you want it to be. It's generally like two units lower to look the same on a Mac as it is on a PC. Um, I also have a little bit of extra saturation and contrast and stuff, and then coming down a little bit further, a little bit of chromatic aberration and a little bit of vignetting. And that gives us our, our basically our post processes, uh, processing the way we see it. Now, as just a little bit of a, a before and after, we can see what our scene looked like before we started this step and what it looks like now, right? So it is a good amount of difference there in the, how this stuff looks. Right, and it adds just a nice artistic feel. One of the things I am gonna do, I'm gonna hit play real quick, and we're gonna see how the post effects, like how the motion blur starts to really take effect as we get going faster, and you can really see it on the ground there. And then also, when I hit the wall, we're gonna see how the sparks are gonna look different. All right, and it's a really big difference between how they used to look, which was just sort of like the yellow capsules, to how they look now. Right, using both the motion blur and the distortion uh, due to chromatic aberration and a few of the other things really kind of sells the effect there. All right, and so that is just the first part of our post-processing and then the next one we're gonna actually do some more stuff, but for now, it is your turn. So what you're gonna do is you are gonna go to your main camera and you are going to add to your main camera a post-process layer by clicking Add Component Rendering Post-Process Layer. And in here, for the layer, you're gonna set post-processing right there. If you happen to not have that layer, you can just add it really quickly inside Unity uh, or, or just raise your hand and we'll help you out with that. And then you're gonna choose some anti-aliasing. I, I say fast approximate anti-aliasing, FXAA works really, really well. Uh, but if you wanna try some of the other ones, uh, it's entirely up to you. And then you're gonna go to your prefabs folder, VFX subfolder, and just grab the post-processing uh, prefab and just drop it into your hierarchy. You're dropping it into the hierarchy so the caves are actually aligned with the caves in the level. Uh, and so, then you're gonna click on global. On the global game object, you're gonna put it on the post-processing layer, 
and you're gonna add a post-processing volume by clicking add component, rendering, post-process volume. Then you're gonna check global, is global. You can add a new profile and just start adding everything you wanna add to it, or if you just wanna use the one I used, you can just click the circle selector and choose global reference, or if you wanna do both, or whatever, uh, but just feel free to play, add, change, make it look absolutely hideous, entirely up to you. Feel free to try it out and see what you can make. Depending on maybe how old the hardware is, uh, some post-processing effects may or may not work, or depending on how powerful a machine you have, they may just cause it to run it like one frame a second, stuff like that. So, I mean, most of these effects, it's one of those things where some are great for even mobile hardware and stuff like that. Other effects are very heavy and should only be used on really powerful machines. And it all just kind of depends on which effects and what the settings are. Some of the effects have like a mobile optimized version, which makes them run a little bit lighter and stuff like that. So. It's kind of a, something you play around with. Some stuff only works if you have compute shader support and metal and some things, you know, not and whatever. So again, it's always just about what kind of machine you have, what sort of stuff you can, you can control. Uh, a lot of times for people, you know, for us who play games, you might remember that, you know, when you start a game and it says, you know, what graphic settings do you want, ultra or best performance, whatever. That's effectively what this is too, where you're saying like, on ultra, I'm gonna turn all this stuff on, all right, but maybe if I scale it back a bit, I'm gonna turn a few of these things off or maybe just all of them off, right? So it's worth knowing that, you know, even though this is really a workshop meant for everybody, depending on what hardware you have, some of the stuff, you know, it may just be a little too heavy.